be here. It's getting late. You had two long days, so I hope uh, that's still working out. Thank you very much for the invitation, for the introduction, and to Boris and Veronica for the invitation to come and speak here. Thank you very much. So, after two days of hearing how to create type, I was thinking, yes, I'm not a type designer, but I'm playing with type, and I try to share a little bit uh, of, of this work that I'm doing. <clears throat> Munich was for me the special treat, because uh, I started in Munich, and this is why I fell in love with graphic design, <laughs> while dreaming about making films. Um, well, after Munich and the studies here, and some short professional experiences, my horizons changed to Paris. I've seen there uh, a group of uh, graphic designers working in a very political and social engaged field. They were called Crapus, and I arrived there with my luggage, and I was lucky to get to work with them for a couple of while, short while, because they split up, the founding members split up, and I don't want to go much more in this. And I co-created the next group, Nous Travaillons Ensemble, which means we work together for the next couple of years, still working in the political and social field, a lot in the suburbs of Paris, uh, before I created or established my atelier close to the Bastille, where I'm still working in this place. And every morning when I cross the Bastille, the place where the revolution started, the French Revolution started, I remind myself that change is possible eventually. This is a view of the studio from far, so it's the nicest view because you see the canal with the boats. And it's one of the oldest factories, and here you can already see one urban changement since I started living in Paris, which was um, more than 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, when, when I arrived, nearly nobody bicycled. There were very few people, and now there's bicycles all over. We have bicycle roads and all that, so the urban expression has changed. I keep my studio very small. It's just me and one or two assistants, because I love to be involved in the whole creative process from the beginning to the end. Uh, Oliver mentioned already uh, the exhibition in um, Frankfurt last year. So I, I like to share that because it was a little bit the exhibition of my life. It was a huge space with 1,600 square meters, four big places, and uh, the director, Matthias wagner Kahr and the curator, Peter Ziska, came and told me, we want you to have an exhibition, but not a retrospective, but a point of view of how you approach graphic design. And uh, the exhibition, happened, but COVID happened too. So not very many people could see it, and it was prolongated for more than one year, but, uh, well, it was totally in the time of COVID, so I'm happy to share it in a little way, in that way. Um, so how to show a work that is created in a special context in France, in a French uh, language, in a very specific, environment in a museum in Germany. So I was thinking, I'll just take some elements out of my work and uh, create the space in the museum, just if it would be an, uh, a work piece on how I approach normally work. So the first thing is, I reacted to the architecture of Richard Meyer, which was a modernist architecture constructed on a grid, and uh, I tried to dialogue with this grid in an organic way, taking elements out of my work for the last 20 years. So I took elements out that I already had used in my graphic work and to introduce it into this uh, museum space. For example, when you come into the building, you have these ramps going up, these uh, ascent bands, uh, and uh, 
the, this visual plays in a certain way with this architecture, bringing in the nature from the outside into the inside. Then you continue the way up until the first floor, and I start with this big sentence, which is a kind of a blueprint for my creative work and the point of departure for the exhibition, and that means I'm a part of the big picture, and the whole big picture is in me. And this is how I see the world and my work. Apropos means, by the way, or speaking of. And I tried to transform the museum spaces into immersive graphic spaces that make visual communication tangible in some way, that you can try you know, to immerse in the space and feel as if you were in a graphic piece in a sensual, poetic, or thought-provoking way. For myself, I understand design as a tool to communicate between people for at the most, and um, in a poetic and in a political way. So, type is a main character in my work, as is color, space, and um, motion also lately. So the museum space, um, I, I started with the nature going up and all the connection places are playing around this idea of nature uh, and, um, and cosmos, the micro and the macro. It's a kind of a collection I call that cosmic poem uh, where I superpose you know, lights and water and reflections that I'm collecting photographically for a long time that I do as a photograph. And um, it is introduced as um, a research piece and you will find it later also in, in the graphic work. So the micro and the macro, you had the phrase in the beginning and this is the same expression in, in a visual way. When you enter the first space, the theme about this is repetition, time, rhythm and layers, space, mirrors and illusions. So you can see this big wall with repetition here and uh, in an oversized place in a wall where repetition turns three times around the space. And the idea is playing also, you know, like actors play, musicians play, and as a designer, I eventually play too. So the idea is the repetition of the play makes me become more and more um, performant, but uh, or, or perfect. Uh, on the other hand, the repetition, the eternal repetition is also a kind of a symbol for, you know, the cycles of life or the cycles of fashions and cycles of uh, communication. In the front, you see uh, crossing through the space, so still the idea of repetition, uh, is this, uh, these five sequences of mirrors that in France we can describe as mirage, which is something like an illusion. And um, posters are often referred to in our society as mirrors of society in public space. And I took it literally, I printed it, it's silk printed, like broken mirrors, because I find we are getting into a society that has tendency to look more and more into the mirror of our own confirmations. And the more we repeat this, the more the mirror breaks. And the reflection of the back of the mirror, you can find in the following piece. You can see on the left side and on the right side other pieces that are corresponding with forms or colors that are in the dialogue of the whole piece. Um, this is the view to the window front who goes out to um, Frankfurt, to the Frankfurt Business Center. And as I said, I wanted to include the context, and my idea was that the people from the towers of the banks and the spitness could watch through the windows into the museum and read the word repetition. So, when 
you go a little bit further, you can see on the window front this little piece. All the other pieces are exactly the same size. It's all poster size all through the exhibition. This is the only smaller piece. It's a piece I've done for a woman exhibi uh, an exhibition about women issues. Issues is not the right word, I guess. And uh, it was about the inequality of uh, payment, and it's about breaking the glass ceiling, which I thought was very appropriate when you looked out of the window to the t bank towers on the other side of the river. When you advance, you see there was this kind of uh, rhythm and chronology of numbers that uh, arrived and that ended in this last piece, which is a piece that I created for this exhibition, it's called System Error. And this uh, System Error reflects about, it's a message from a computer error, a computer message, but through this image I wanted to evoke all different systems, uh, system errors, political, ecological, human, and suggest a reboot of our thinking. Here you can see these big numbers that uh, are silk prints on the wall, overlapping a kind of rhythm with a center, and uh, it is thought about like a, you know, like an unchronological uh, countdown ending in the system era. But when you watch of the pieces, also it's a work of overprinting silk screen and layering and watching what these different layers suggest emotionally. There were classes in the room, in these pieces they could visit for a short while. And there's always this idea to play between the two and three dimensions of the layers. And the whole experience was meant to be an experience where people could um, own their own point of view and uh, each photo that you could take into the exhibition would work like a poster by itself from each different angle that you could approach it. In the second space, I talk more about light motion and the human body. So this is, you, you come in, there's a big screen with different layers that project light. And, uh, oops, that was a little bit quick. And there's a long sequence of dance uh, that's between figurative and abstract, uh, where you can see the different layers projecting into space. I will talk about that a little bit later. This is just um, evoking different ways that are important for me in my work. You can see here a little hidden space that was not indicated. By the way, there were no signage and there were no uh, subtitles. The whole exhibition was a poor experiment, a mental thing. You had a little uh, leaflet that you could have if you wanted, but there was no explanation given. So it's, it's really a kind of an experience, like when you saw this um, poster hanging in this very small space, uh, which is one of the posters of a uh, dance company I'm working with. It, you know, it's about your own um, imagination and suggestion, how, how you feel that the references you, you put with these colors and this, uh, this very androgen figure that is on the knees and you don't know if it is a movement of victory or if it's more a movement of despair. And I think the answer is in the eye of the viewer. There are other elements, overdimensional body laying on or dancing, uh, like photographed with a thermic camera. And when you come out of this room, you can see very many layers of different um, expressions of dance and movement on the body. This, uh, by the way, these were photos that people who were in the exhibition sent me. So here you can see the whole wall. After that, I will get a little bit more in where, how this works, works in the practical work. So then you come 
to the second half of the exhibition, and as you see, the idea of this uh, space, this cheminement, this way of going through the, the picture continues and guides you uh, in the direction of the next part. All these elements are elements of process that I have done, and they are reconstructed uh, into a different um, space to tell another story or to open up to another story. And then when you enter in the third space, you can see uh, a lot of elements really taken out of uh, poster campaigns like this one, La et la question. This was the French version and for the exhibition I did it in German. Das ist hier die Frage, which means this is the question. Here you see uh, a composition of about 40 posters of a body of work of about 350, which I have done in my career so far. And um, as you can see, to work in series and to work with strong colors and elements that uh, weave text and image into each other are a very recurrent part of my work. I can't, unfortunately, given the time, not go into all the different uh, projects, but I will talk about a couple of projects to, to give an idea about this, um, the applications. Here you can see different times, different areas together. So one of the quoted projects, the first one that you have seen in the beginning with these big numbers, came out of a work um, which I did for, or I do still since 2016, for a building in the Grand Paris. Grand Paris is what is bigger than the Paris that we defined as Paris, the suburbs. A lot of the suburbs now are taken into account of Paris, and it's called Grand Paris. And Lond is a building and a theater and a centre d'art at the same time in Grand Paris. It's, uh, the architect is Claude Basconi, and the building is constructed like a wave, so the building is called the wave, Londres. And uh, obviously, if you have a name like that, and a building like that, and you look at the facade, you have the impression that the visuals mirroring in the facade are a little bit like a heart rate. Also, when you look inside the building, you see everything is uh, really constructed on the heights of the colognes. So, uh, it was a very easy choice to choose a type that reflects that lond. And as we are in verticality, but I wanted to express that this is a building also that is alive and is a, like a heartbeat, it could also be animate. Uh, Sorry, it could be animated, like and extends, expand and come together and be used in all these different kind of forms. Together with the the wave of the type is the wave of the color, and each month there was a new color associated to this. This traverses the whole year, and I show you just some examples how it would work. And you must imagine that this is a suburb. Uh, where people, where it's not really a center of the city, it's a city where people go to work and to sleep, uh, where most of the traffic is going by a uh, car, and so um, there should be signs that are really strong signs without necessarily having a very commercial note to it. I really wanted it to be immediately identified as being of uh, this art center and to address in another vocabulary to the people. This was the first uh, program. And uh, the idea was playing with type and the type become the actor of the stage. So the whole program and the theater pieces are um, illustrated through the use of the type and not with photos. I don't know what happens. Oops and not with photos, but you got the idea. I uh, don't know, it's interrupted. And, um, and so the type would be the only expression. 
Um, it worked for a year, and then the director of the theater said, this is too abstract, we really need photos. And this was the only year, unfortunately, uh, it's cutting, the only year that it was really uh, possible. Other than that, most of the time, it was associated with images. Because we still think that images are more easy to understand and more popular, which I don't agree to. But this is unfortunately the, the discussion that has, takes place. That was, for example, an interpretation for a 40 years anniversary exhibition with the Centre Pompidou. And these are different years with different layers. You recognize from the first room the different uh, layers of the round forms that are introduced here to create space and how it uh, is used uh, throughout this, the cultural season and the whole year. I just, I don't want to go more into detail with that because we don't really have the time and, um, but I just wanted to give you an overview how the different years were always uh, played around with the same identity, the same type, which is the truck, by the way, by commercial type, without making any publicity. Uh, and uh, that the type itself becomes the identity of the place, or is a big supporter of the identity of the place. I show this picture, this is the theater director, and it's over 20 years now that we collaborate together in over four theaters. This is the fifth theater that we work together. So this kind of stories happen too. I often have long time working relationships with uh, my clients that I understand more like partners than as clients, and mostly they become friends. Uh, Another year where the type and the image merge together. And I show you some examples of this here. And um, well, this is the year that has just passed and you can see holding up some of the posters in the hallways of the factory where I work. It's just a nice place, by the way, surrounded by many other disciplines like architects and designers and filmmakers, and it's a really nice place to work. And um, what happens last year uh, during the COVID time, of course, a lot of work was cancelled, a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, manifestations were cancelled, so uh, we still wanted to be present in the public space with the theatre, and uh, we had the idea to invite to the to this place to the loan young people from the city uh, to make them acquaintance with the place, but also to. Uh, photograph them, make a portrait of them, and then through the identity of the theater, which is already so known that you don't have to write on anymore, if you use this type in this area, you know where it comes from, uh, to create a kind of staging of this young generation. Uh, during the COVID time, the type becomes the name of the play, or this is their own name, by the way, and uh, the poster becomes the stage. So we had, during the old summer months, all these young uh, people from Velisi in present in, in their own city while they could not go out. So that was, at least the image was present in the city. Voila. So the next uh, place or the next uh, um, project I wanted to share was the Palais de Tokyo, last uh, 2019, already three years ago, and it, there was an exhibition about sound poetry. I'm a big um, lover of poetry, and especially sound poetry. I'm quite interested in and. Uh, sound poetry had never been shown in a museum of visual arts and it, they were very reluctant and they said, well, nobody will come to listen to sound poetry in, in a museum like that. So the challenge was 
how to play visually to not uh, be too present uh, and to make curious about the sound and um, also uh, yeah how, how to occupy the space who was a little bit hidden uh, in the underground of the Palais de Tokyo. The foundation, the Fondazione, who gave all the most of the pieces is an Italian Fondazione, was called Fondazione Bonotto, and they are a big textile uh, industry too, so they have a big textile and they also have this art foundation, which is a big, one of the biggest fluxus collections in the, in the, um, in the world. You recognize the lines that have been in the exhibition. Here they were in the, where they're coming from, La Va Libérée, it means the liberated voice. And this were in the underground of the Palais de Tokyo, where you have on the left side the identity of the Palais itself. And on the right side we had this hallway leading up to this um, representation room where you could, uh, where it was supposed to play the sound. So you can see very quickly here. By the way, because it was the Fondazione, I could uh, realize a dream. I could uh, create a poster in textile. So the idea is I could use all the machines and all the colors that I wanted, and I could create uh, this banner of textile. My idea was, as there was a hallway to make people curious, to make in the beginning of this hallway these um, curtains with the title, and then so the music wouldn't go out in the rest of the museum, you would go in and all that. But then there's always uh, something else happening and for museums you have to have, you know, this, um, this treatment against fire. So they put the textile in the treatment against fire and when it arrived it was totally deformated and I was just, I knew I couldn't do it again because it was a unique piece. So I was thinking, wow, what, what am I going to do? And so uh, in the end the only solution was to put it on a frame, on a wood frame, and to really fix it and to, I don't know how to say it, to pull it, that it would not float, and uh, put it in the end of the hallway, and to give it another readability, another meaning, I used it as, um, how do you say that, for a, a loudspeaker, the, the textile you put in front of a loudspeaker, and behind this I put a uh, Slow, um, bus sound, very slow bus sound, so you would be attracted into the hallway in another way and to lead up to this other room where you eventually could um, listen to this, um, to the real poetry, which was this inclining space and these waves that we constructed, it was very complicated to have it even, so you could really immerse into the space. And as so often, I used the very straight color to, to attract and to create the emotion to go into the space. And that you could take this poetry away, I also created this app, very easy app. And if you like sound poetry, it's for free and it's still on the apps. Uh, so I'm making a switch uh, to this second room that I showed you about the dance, the light, the movement. This is a work that I did for over 10 years and it just finished last year. It is um, a dance center in Le Havre. Le Havre is in France in the north, in Normandy, close to the canal to England. And um, this is where the first boats for New York left from Europe, and uh, they have these um, old um, hangers, uh, how do you say that, not hangers, uh, where you stock uh, stuff close to the haber, how do you say that, um, the warehouses, yes, the old warehouses, and um, in one of these old warehouses, they uh, placed the National Choreographic Center uh, of Le Havre, Donc, that was, um, um, Le Phare means uh, the lighthouse and it was all about light and dancing and so it was an uh, easy choice for the identity. My letters were put into light and danced. And uh, the whole identity over the years was all about this idea of dancing letters and light 
and this was the starting point for a collaboration of 10 years. And um, I know this is Peter Bilak doesn't like that I talk about it because this is one of his very first types because I contacted him to uh, very nicely customize one letter that I wanted to have a little bit different. And he said, why do you take this type? It's a very old type of me. They have much better types now. And I said, it's, 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 sometimes it's not about perfection. Sometimes it's really about finding the right character. And I thought this was the perfect character for this project. It was, it has, it had, yeah, it it has something to it that I liked very much. So I show you a couple of uh, examples how this game with light and type happened. It was also for the brochures. In the visuals, I also played with this light idea. And even in the choice of the paper, I chose paper that was very thin so you could uh, see the images and the text through the pictures. So um, this was the beginning. The first three years all functioned around this idea of the slide. Ah, ah, it all goes too quick. And then, oh, sorry, I don't know. There was some, um, uh, I'm very sorry about that. that uh, it, no, it should not go like that. That's life. So then the idea was that uh, they had this facade uh, on the building. And as I mentioned, it was a facade uh, of a very old warehouse. There was a whole part of the city where the uh, warehouses were very nicely renovated and there were all kind of closing stores into it. And then there was the part behind the gas, sta uh, yeah, the gas station, the train station where the uh, street comes into the city, where you had the culture here, yeah, like this center. And uh, after this first two years that we had worked together, the directors asked me, um, yeah, could you not just put the new type on the building? And I said, no, the type on the building won't do it. You really have to become a lighthouse. And uh, they said, yeah, but we cannot. We don't have the money and we don't have the budget and everything like that. And, uh, but they trusted me and we had this relationship that they trusted me. I said, I'll make you a project like that and you just go and show it to the mayor, which at the time was Eduard Philippe, who was afterwards our premier minister, now he's the mayor again. And, um, and he recognized that that could be a starting point of transforming uh, an area of the city. So finally, one year later, we found the budget through the Ministry of Culture and the city, and we could realize it. But if you watch this here, under the Centre Geographique National, you see the panel, Le Far, the lighthouse, with light bulbs, which they constructed themselves, and they lived one year with that, because they believed that the facade would be better afterwards. So this is how it was finished. And then the idea was, I wanted it to shine from the inside out, to show what happens really, and to uh, radiate light into the public space. But I had no idea how, I've never done it before. So I thought, stupidly, you could do it with a video projector, but of course it didn't work. So with a, a young programmer, we programmed something, we found this grids, and one uh, pixel, glass pixel, became one LED, and uh, eventually we managed to do that. What was interesting is that this uh, front, this uh, facade, worked as well from the inside as from the outside. And this is how you could see it afterwards. So it was a little different. And every night since then, they play this light installation, which is um, yeah, uh, a thing between abstraction and uh, figurative. And meanwhile, we, we are on the third thing. I don't want it to be a screen. I really wanted it to be an installation where People can suggest what happens, or you can see what happens inside, but it's not, it, it's not a, another screen in the city. So that happened. 
that had an other effect again on on the on the printing uh, matters. It's a little bit like a Russian puppet. Often one thing leads to another, leads to another. So after this projection of the inside, I photographed uh, the glass tiles from the inside, and this became for the next three years uh, the visual expression in the for this uh, centre, the dance. And uh, I love to work with silk print, and we come back to this micro and macro idea that I've mentioned before. And um, I don't know why it doesn't. And when you can see this, you will see all these little lights that were printed in a chrome color and reflected the light over the poster. And uh, on the right side, you see a little film how that light changes when you move in front of the poster. So in the end, it's a dance poster where the spectator has to move in front of. So you dance in front of the poster to get it into the right light. Another year, another expression. This were what you have seen in the exhibition before. This is how it looks in the city. And then the following years, it was all about the body and the human body and how the body and uh, the light could tell different stories together through the movement. So this year, it was all about scanning the body or the body dancing through rains of light. The association are free to you to have. The posters hung in the public space with or without the text. So this was also... Um, a kind of a poetic expression without the text. Um, and it was all about the idea that we are transparent or scant people sometimes. Which was very interesting also is that the directors, uh, who are two women of this um, choreographic center, they let me really very free was coming up with the new projects every time. And most of the time it was totally okay, sometimes we discussed it, but it was often uh, referred to a more political idea. For example, in Normandy, close to, the, um, close to Le Havre, where we are with the dance center, and where the light shines on the dancers, uh, the cameras, a couple of kilometers further, the cameras and shine on, uh, lorries that transport people to the frontier that want to cross uh, the borders and that are detected by heat cameras or by scanners. And so with this thing in a very subtle way, you can read it on different layers if you want, we were talking about this kind of topics too. And that was the wall that you saw in the exhibition. And that was the kind of heat cameras. The last year uh, of our collaboration, I worked with this image in RVB, red, blue, green, because it has been two years that we have communicated only through screens and we all were missing the human touch. And so I used that as a subject for the last uh, season that we had together. And we finished with this little present for the dancers and the people who came to the festivals. Comme j'aime que tu exist, how I love that you exist. And you could have this little thing carrying around while you're porting the mask and you couldn't really talk or make a gesture. And to end this 10 year co collaboration, sorry, um, we ended with a big messy on, on the facade to say goodbye to Le Havre. The director changed it, and in this time, I changed too. The next uh, project is a very small project. I just wanted to put it in. It is for the uh, Musée d'Art Décoratif in Paris, and they asked me to do their booklet, Transmission des Activités du Musée, the transmission of the activities of the museum. So this is all the different uh, exhibitions, the courses, whatever ha happens in the museum, also for the school classes and all that. And I was thinking, in the Musée d'Art Décoratif, they collection fashion, 
graphic design, uh, um, object design, photo, all kind of stuff, but no type. And I thought type is an important expression uh, of our society, and so I just suggested that each of the numbers would be created in a different type, which was a lot of more work for me, because of course the budget was not different, but I, for, I kind of invited them to buy these types for their collection. So for each number, we bought another type, and uh, so all these types are now in their collection, and also in the end of each program, I made a little uh, point typo where we spoke about the type designer and the type, and to, to um, make it, uh, to sensibilize a big public to this question that often really doesn't think about what kind of type is used and why. I'm very happy about that, that went on for six years and now these whole collections are also in the collection of the um, CNAP, which is the Center for, for Arts in France, for collection. Can you still? We have nearly finished. So this is, in, in the end, uh, of this long hallway, you have seen these posters with people and uh, this name Relax. And that was a project that's a little bit older, but I still love it very much. It was a little theater in the city of Chaumont, which is the city of uh, graphic design. We have a big museum now there for graphic design, Le Signe. And uh, they had a little theater space uh, which 2006, I think it was, uh, which opened up, which was an old bowling hall and should be reorganized into a theater. This was a sign, I worked with another designer at that moment in free collaboration, Vincent Perrotet. And on the construction side, we found this uh, uh, name, which was the name of the bowling hall, Relax, in this old 50s fridge type. And we thought that was so interesting that we just kept it. We said, this is just the new Relax now. And the idea was to reinvest and type designers don't get a hard uh, attack now, but uh, we, we designed it in 100 different ways very freely. And uh, the idea was to use it every time in a very different way uh, on each application. And as we created it, there were no um, corporate identity book or something like that. We just freely played around this idea. That was the new entry. And uh, for a city that was very reluctant towards uh, ha having a little theater, the idea was um, they ha would have preferred to have a bigger football stadium instead of a theater. And there were many articles in the newspaper about that, so we tried to focus on a very popular way to write type, so it was voluntary, very badly written and very badly typed, and it mirrored the city in the city. It was kind of a self-reflection of the city. We included the people who were the most against it by making them our poster stars. So the uh, commercials or later different people from the city who were identi identified and that's also the context who allows that because it's a little city with 25,000 inhabitants. You couldn't do that in Paris because people wouldn't recognize. That only has a meaning because you can recognize uh, your neighbor, the collectioner of all the girls in the supermarket on the cash account. And um, so the people all became for 15 minutes the carrier of the message of uh, the theater, and I thought it was a really very nice way to include the city into the theater project, and it had also worked out. This was, for example, the city gardener very proudly in front of his uh, poster. And then the director changed, the politic changed, and, sorry, and uh, the budgets changed. So the budget went down, like it goes so well right now, um, a little bit everywhere, but in France uh, we had this problem very much. And uh, so with the new director, we said, okay, we continue the idea 
to uh, intervene in the public space, but we just make it a monochrome poster. And it became a mixture between the city images and the images of the, of the play. And here you can see it in the city itself. Another year goes by, more budget cuts. Meanwhile, Vincent and I, we had split, we didn't work together anymore, so I um, were responsible for the very, very low budget and uh, communication. And the director said, no, we have to put this uh, play away and this play away and this play away, you know? And I said, no, 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 we're not putting only the text out. We really show that it has been canceled. So we will just uh, do, you know, like this scratching over the text and show how the, uh, what happens. And this is uh, such as we see, it's a double meaning. It means this is being played here. It works also in English. So um, he said, no, 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 we cannot do that because if that happens, I will be fired. And uh, I said, you just say that was a graphic design choice, which he eventually did. Obviously, nobody believed him, but it had worked and had a good reaction in the city. You see it on the left side in front of the city hall with liberty, equality, fraternity written on it. And. Uh, uh, a year later, there was even more budget cuts, and then I said, now we have to become really drastic. It's to be or not to be. In the city of the post, there's no posters anymore, and this is here the question, and that was a poster that was printed in three different versions, just the text, the text with the identity of the theater and the program. And that is when the client gets it uh, and shows very broadly that he is behind uh, the message. This hung for one year, a whole year, the same poster in the city, and um, it created a lot of discussions and reactions. So we are coming to an end of the exhibition. And uh, in the last room, you can see the layers of different versions of Relax hanging big in the space where people could walk through this installation. And the idea was, after all these other questions that were maybe a little bit more existential, to hear, say, okay, relax. But it also raises the questions in the culture, should the culture be seen as a diversion and a divertisement, or should it serve to better understand a complicated world and to become self-determined participants, where we become self-determined participants within a cultural discourse. That was the idea behind that. And here we play also with the light and the shadow again. The layers, the repetition, the structure is always the same coming up. And uh, this is the way things eventually change. And now we come to the moving horizons, which brought me here to Munich, uh, because um, for the, this year's festival, the moving horizons uh, with uh, the Munich Creative Business Week was an invitation from Boris Kochan to collaborate with him and his uh, agency and to work for Bayern Design and uh, the Munich Creative Business Week. And um, as the directors are here, I want to welcome them and thank you for this beautiful collaboration. Nadine Vincentini and um, Lisa Braun. And I heard that uh, David Kraus is also here somewhere. No? Not. And Boris, uh, and Boris and your beautiful team, of course, at Kochan and Partner. And uh, well, that's it. You might have seen it already. And of course, you can say it's a uh, moving type. The type, by the way, is uh, from the Type Together company. Uh, and it's created by a young uh, uh, typographer who's called Florian Fechner. And uh, that was just the perfect type I was looking for, because when I thought about moving horizons, I was thinking about something in motion, in organic motion, something also like breathing 
and uh, transforming, you know, the heavy becomes light and the fragile becomes bold. And um, that was the idea behind this visual, which exists in three different color teams. So also the idea that the colors of complementary, uh, the complementary colors dialogue together and uh, come into a, uh, crossing. Oops. I have trouble to consult here with the computer. And maybe while you were walking these last days through Munich, you might have seen some of these. It's a, so first, maybe for the type designers, uh, that's this variable type is, um, just came out last year, I think. So it's a very uh, new type, and it was an, a really good experience to explore it with this project. If you came through the city, you might have seen the different print versions of it. And uh, even in the banners, am Stachus. And there's also these um, printed posters, which we have reprinted in silk print, um, because we love it, silk print. So thank you very much.